guys, Katie. I'm here with Omelette. She is my female African egg eating snake. I'm so sorry I didn't post yesterday. I was really busy. I went to a movie with my grandma and we didn't come back until midnight. Like the day flew by. Today flew by. It's already, what time is it? It's already 6.15 p.m. and I still have not made a video. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have a long night of editing to do. <laughs> Yay! But so if you're watching this video, you probably have something called a phidiophobia, the fear of snakes. And if you're watching this, I'm so proud of you for trying to overcome that fear. This is the first step to actually overcoming it is wanting and trying to overcome it. <laughs> We're gonna be talking about killing some of those myths and most importantly, how to actually overcome your fear about them. So logically speaking, you have nothing to be afraid of when it comes to snakes, especially if you don't have a pet one. <laughs> because you probably won't ever have to come into contact with one if you don't want to. So this here is Omelette. She is my African egg-eating snake, so she does not have teeth, nor does she eat mice. I thought she'd be a good one to pull out today when we are talking about snake fears, because if she doesn't have teeth, you got nothing to be afraid of. And if you are afraid of snakes, you are not crazy. Your whole life you've been raised to think of snakes as being scary when you've seen them on TV shows and movies and the Bible. <laughs> but in fairness, all of that stuff does not exist. The Bible does exist, obviously, but the serpent wasn't really a serpent, it was literally the devil in the form of a serpent, but he himself was not. And the first step to overcoming aphidiophobia is understanding that logically you have nothing to be afraid of. Snakes, except for her obviously, she's an exception, <laughs> have rows of teeth. So when they bite you, it's little pinpricks, and it honestly hurts less than pinpricks. Like, I've pricked myself with a safety pin, far more than I've gotten bitten by a snake. I've pricked myself with a needle far more times than I have ever been bitten by a snake. I think I've been bitten by a snake a total of three times ever in my life. And I have four of them. All of them were from my baby king snake, which was completely expected because he's a king snake. If you don't know anything about king snakes, they're always hungry. They have a very high food response, which is really helpful because that was my first snake. So it was really, really nice <laughs> to have a snake and know that he was healthy and then he just kind of works on the taming later. If you, my point to all this is that if you were to get bitten, it would not really hurt, especially with a littler snake with Severus. He bites and holds on sometimes. Not gonna lie to you, I'm gonna be completely honest, he has bitten me three times and held on, not let go. But to be honest, it doesn't hurt. All I do is wash it off. The other thing that people are afraid of when it comes to snakes is that they're all venomous. There are very few venomous snakes. There's a lot less venomous snakes than there are non-venomous ones. And almost all of the time, when you see snakes in a home, they're not venomous. As a pet, I mean. <laughs> I don't know if you get rattlesnakes in your house. I'm sure it's happened to some people, but what I mean as a pet, most people, unless they're really, really experienced, do not own venomous snakes. The other reason people are afraid of snakes is because they think they're such great escape artists. As long as you keep the cage latched at all times, you make sure you always close it. They are not smart enough to unlatch it. They don't even know what they're doing. They're pretty dumb. But if a snake was to escape, it's usually very easy to find them. But I've never personally had any of my snakes escape. I do know people that have, and they say it's not a big deal. Usually they find them within the first day. There's tons and tons of videos about how to find them. The other misconception about snakes is that you always have to feed them live. Food. Most snakes, except for egg-eating snakes, obviously, because they're egg-eating, <laughs> eat mice or rats. And everyone thinks that you gotta, like, give them a live one. If your snake is on live, it's most likely because it would not take frozen. What I actually recommend is trying your best to feed, feed frozen thawed, because the mouse could turn around and bite the snake. Like I said, again, snakes are dumb, and they might strike and miss. My sister has two snakes that are so unbelievably incredibly sweethearts. I wouldn't think of snakes as being sweet, but her snake literally gives her kisses on the nose. It's so cute. She kind of does. Not as much as my sister's snake though. So if after all of this you still are afraid of snakes, oh we're going to be talking about and relaxation things. The best way to get over it is just to do it. If you're afraid of snakes, I'm not saying you have to right away, but I would like you just sometime in the future hold one. I was deathly afraid of roller coasters, like super afraid of them. And I rode one, still hated it, but I did it. And that way I knew that the 
I was stronger than the fear. And who knows, maybe someday you'll actually like snakes. I used to be really afraid of snakes because I thought the only snake out there was rattlesnakes. I didn't know there were kinds of non-venomous snakes. So I was really afraid of them too. And that's totally fine if you are. But once I got to know them and I realized they're not scary at all, I really love them. If you're just not ready for that yet, I think it's called exposure therapy. Exposure therapy? Basically, it's where you can talk to someone. Do you this with someone else? If even just the word snake scares you, they're gonna say snake, then you say snake, then they say snake, then you say snake, until you're just not scared of it anymore. Think of it as any other word. Don't think of it as the actual thing. Just think of it as a word and then start to think of it as an actual snake and that will alone snap you out of that. And doing those little itty bitty steps is going to help you big time. I'd recommend the first snake you hold being an egg eating snake if you can find one because this is the one that's going to give you like the most mental sanity. <laughs> is that the word I'm looking for? You just have the security of knowing they don't have teeth and they don't eat mice. So I hope this video was a little bit more, like it made you just a little, a little smidgen bit more tolerant towards these creatures because I love them. After you've done the little itty bitty steps at a time training, <laughs> look into pet too because there's tons of cute videos about them. Snake discovery is one that really personally helped me get over my fear of snakes. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This video is already 21 minutes long. 22, never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys go. Love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow.